Hello, testing. Can anyone hear me? If you can hear me out there, just uh, drop something in the chat. We're going to get started in just a moment, so we'll make sure that everything's working okay. Can anyone hear me? If you can hear me out there, just uh, chat. We're going to get started. Fantastic. Thanks, Alison. Welcome. And Diana, welcome. Welcome to the live. We've also got Danita, Danita Reynolds from Eugene, Oregon, USA. We've got Wendy, Wendy Dunham back from, from last time. How are you all doing today? Hope you're, uh, must be, must be pretty much evening for most of you. Just woken up. Me anyway, I've just woken up here in Melbourne. It's pretty, um, yeah. Morning over morning over here and we're in lockdown again. So great that I could um, have something to do this morning and, and obviously uh, share some of my tips and some of my uh, urban sketching tips and line and wash tips with you guys as well. So um, yeah, as long as you've gone through just, uh, you know, the discussions in, in the event, I mean, I put down the reference photo and uh, the, the sketching template. I know some of you like to trace the template, so that's fine as well. But I'm going to be going through just how to draw this this scene as well, and you know it's always a good thing to to try to draw these particular scenes with urban sketching. It's essentially a way to a really good way to incorporate drawing and painting into your daily life because often you know we you know we're at home and uh, you know we've got limited sort of inspiration in terms of nature and stuff like that especially if you're sitting in a room and if you're kind of on the way home from work or maybe you're just walking around on the weekend just going for a walk it's very easy to carry around a sketchbook or just you know bits of paper with you a pen and some watercolors and you can just do a sketch right there on the on the um on the particular you know place that you're walking by so re really recommend it and that's what this particular workshop's about so um just going to have a quick look through the chats. A lot of people in this one today. Um, Marcella and we've got Patricia. Fantastic. Great to see you again, Patricia. Wendy, uh, Lynn, and Jen, Jen Villabos from Houston, Texas. We've got Jill Jones, Angela, Barbetta, Rosanna, Yvette. Great to see you again, Yvette. And Irene Rathbone, Darren Carter, Gould, uh, Glory Beer, Bonnie Parsons, Kate, Kate um, from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome, Kate. And we've also got Kate, Kate Woolcock. Welcome, Kate. I think I think we've got two Kates from Melbourne. Sandy from Singapore, Lindsay from Melbourne. Few, few Melburnians here. You guys are keeping busy during lockdown. That's good. Um, oh, Kate from Sydney, sorry. And Sheila Rodriguez, Mexico City. Bonnie Parsons from Palm Springs, California. Laura from Sicily, awesome. And we've got Glow from Manila. Darren Carter from the UK. Marbo from Northern California, US. Uh, Greg Gregorio from Ohio, US. And Roth from Jackson, California. Shanelin Martinez, nice to see you again from Colorado. Yves, great to see you again, Yves. And uh, thanks for coming along today. Francisca um, Aguirre. And uh, the question is, will the class be re recorded? Yes, it will be. So you can um, just watch it after. I'm gonna try to speed this one up a little bit. I know last time, um, yeah, I, I did, you know, I did go for quite a while, nearly two hours, I think it was. So hopefully, you know, hopefully I can speed this one up a bit. But um, yeah, if you guys have any questions and, you know, want to know what I'm doing or, you know, in the middle of, of, of my drawing, just feel free to feel free to ask questions. Okay. Um, this one here is a little bit different from the last one that I was doing because it's going to be focused a little bit more on um, drawing some quick kind of gestural figures. In, in these urban landscapes. And obviously you've got buildings and shadows and stuff like that as well. But, you know, when, when you're drawing scenes that have a lot of people, uh, I'm just gonna show you the way that I do it and how I kind of plan it out. So 
it's it's merely meant to be a, a quick little exercise. Hopefully, it doesn't take too long for me to draw things in. I do get a bit carried away with the drawing um, at times, but um, we'll go ahead and get get started. So, um, last time I ran one of these things, I um, went through and I talked about like a few techniques and you know a few drawing techniques as well. So I'm going to bring up just a really quick uh, where is it? Just a really quick sort of thing that I'd drawn before. Just quickly answer a chat. So Anthony, Anthony's asked how long's the class? So I'll hopefully keep this to one and a half hours maximum. So uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't want to rush it, but at the same time, you know, I don't want to be sitting here all day. Um, but yeah, look, if it does go a little bit over, you can always watch it afterwards as well. It's all going to be recorded and available. So I just want to make sure I run through everything with you guys uh, that I know anyway. So these are some quick little sketches that I kind of put together um, before, and you, it's probably hard to see, but um, the main thing to keep in mind when you're drawing figures is that the head of the figure needs to be, it, it's basically one eighth of the entire body. So you've got eight heads that basically fit into the entire length of the body. And that's how you kind of get the proportions correctly. So if you can see here, I've just made, you know, basic segments here. Um, and I apply this rule to most of the figures uh, that I draw. And yeah, essentially, if you follow this, you're going to get nicely proportioned um, bodies and, and things like that. I've also got, uh, what have I got here? I was playing around with some of these figures here. So this is kind of a little exercise illustrating um, how to draw figures uh, that are walking on a tilt or sort of running, that kind of thing. So if you if you basically just draw the head on a slight tilt, the figure looks like it's walking in a particular direction. So if you see that one there, the figure's head's just completely straight and standing up. And that makes sense. Um, another thing to keep in mind as well is that when you're drawing figures and they're walking uh, directly towards the camera or maybe away from the camera, you will notice, um, especially you know, if you've got a mirror and you kind of walk around the house, you notice it as well. The leg that you're stepping uh, forwards in will also uh, be the shoulder that's slightly um, down. So you're kind of drawing that shoulder a little bit further down and then uh, that in proportion to the, in relation to the leg that's gone forward. So probably not making so much sense here, but um, well, a little bit of a headache this morning, working up with a bit of a headache. So bear with me if I'm not, um, I'm not completely on the ball, but you know, we'll make it work. This is a, a little, um, look, it's, it's a very quick, quick sketch that I've done here, just highlighting how to draw like a clump of figures. So um, how I initially draw like a whole group of figures, sometimes if I just want to get it in quickly, is that we just, I just go ahead and draw the heads first. So, um, you know, have a few overlapping and maybe a few in the back like that. And that just allows you to place where you want them to be. And then after that, you can put in the bodies um, and that sort of thing and a bit of the, the shirts and stuff. And it helps you to create a bit of overlap in those figures. So um, that's one little technique that I sort of have. Great. And Francisca, the picture is not clear. Me, um, I think I can maybe just move the camera a little bit closer. How's the picture for everyone else? So you, is that, is it looking okay for you guys? Let me just maybe flick around to a few others. Um, these are a few little, uh, little sketches that I did. This, um, these three here I did on, on site, park near my place in um, Carlton Gardens. Okay. Okay, thanks guys. Right. I was a bit worried. Sometimes, you know, the thing that bugs me the most with running these uh, lives is 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 just the technical kind of stuff that on the camera doesn't show up properly, or there's uh, a lot of lag issues and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, good that it all works works okay. So, these are a few that I just really I did really quickly on site, and you know, with the techniques I'll show you today, you should be able to to basically um, go out there and and um, you know, go into a park, or it could be anywhere really. You could be walking around the city, sitting on a bench, and just know how to sketch 
uh, similar scenes to this. Here's a few others um, as well here. These ones I actually did from a, from a photograph. So, um, you know, I had a little bit more time so that there's, there's more details on here. If you compare it to say this one, this one here, you know, when you're sketching on site, you know, the scene's constantly changing. There's, you know, these people were here initially, and then um, there was there was a couple of ladies that were sitting here, and then they stood up and walked off. So you really have to be quite quick and and uh, in getting in those uh, bits and pieces. And you know, I've got a few ducks here in the foreground. These weren't here. I just went onto to uh, Google and just found some ducks, and I thought I'd put them in because you know I've got all this area in the foreground. I thought it'd be good to fill it in with something. Um, but urban sketching, obviously, it's, it's mostly done in person. But if you have a reference picture or you can't go out, it's locked down or something like that. Another thing I do is um, you can open up Google Maps or any type of, I don't know what else there is, but Google Maps Street View and basically go through and um, just a way of, of um, yeah picking out a scene from anywhere around the world and you can sketch from that as well. So here's, yeah. so here's a, a few I suppose that I'll show you. Um, this one's done in a slightly different style. I've just gone quicker here, and I've used some pigment liners instead of these these pens. So you get a slightly different kind of um, texture to the lines. I don't know how to sort of describe it, but the lines are a little bit more um, jagged, and uh, it skips the paper. So, but mainly for what we're doing, what we'll be doing today is I'm just going to be using a 0.5. Um, ink pen, black ink pen, and I've also got a couple others here, got a 0 0.7 and a 0 0.38. Just make sure that you know, whichever one you choose, uh, whichever pens you choose, just make sure that they state that they have permanent ink or waterproof ink. That's the the um, the big thing to make sure. So when we go over with the watercolors, it's not gonna, um, yeah, it's not gonna run everywhere. Okay, so got the reference photo up. Okay, and we are going to get started. So if anyone has any last minute questions, uh, yeah, just let me know or, you know, also during the chat, so I'll probably check on the chat um, periodically as I'm drawing. Okay, great. Yeah, it looks like some people were having troubles with the audio, um, Look, I hope it. I hope it kind of improves. It's it's a it's a bit weird. It's half, you know, half of everyone watching seems to have you know have issues with the audio. Half seems to be going okay. Um, maybe watch it. You can watch it afterwards as well and see how it's uh, how it's going. Might might be better once you replay it. Um, but yeah, apologies for that. And I hope um, I hope you get something out of this class. Alrighty, um, great, great, great. Uh, thanks, Anthony. All clear and good picture. Great, great. Okay, I might get started now. I'll be sitting here for a while. Uh, thanks, everyone. Okay, so this is a pretty complicated scene, and I think I'm notorious, you know, in terms of trying out scenes that have a lot going on. Um, and the reason why I choose scenes like this is because it gives you more options in terms of uh, being able to simplify down, down details. Just because you've got all these figures and all these windows, everything like that there, doesn't mean you have to draw it all in. So um, one thing to keep in mind when, you, when you're drawing, especially a really quick urban sketch, the sketch that you end up with is always going to be a fraction of the detail of what the reference picture is or whatever you're seeing. So I like to have a reference that has oh, you know, a fair bit going on so then I can pick and choose. It just gives me more options to decide what to put in here. But you know, some people do like more simple photos with less things in there. It's just because it's just less of um, less to, to to sort of focus on, and it's less confusing. But I'll show you how to sort of simplify this down, I guess, in my own sort of way. Um, so we're going to follow basically the perspective of this. Um, you know, the, the the general composition of this reference photo. I'm not really going to change around too much, um, and I don't have a board or anything. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to pop in the area just underneath the buildings. So that large tower in the back, apparently this is this is Dubrovnik. I had no idea. This is, um, the photo just says Croatia on it, but someone pointed out to me it's it's Dubrovnik, but it's a beautiful, um, it's like a beautiful city. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna get my pen and pop that pen on the side a little bit. 
and we want to look um, it now the buildings end just about halfway so if you look at the halfway point of the page here bottom of the building ends like about here so just a little bit above halfway so as a as a general guide what we're going to do is we're just going to mark out this area um that okay so really lightly graze the paper that and this is just going to help me put in all the buildings and all that sort of thing okay fantastic and then and what we'll start doing already is um i you know if we look at this this whole reference picture what we want to do is look at the big shapes and we can simplify all these buildings down essentially into one gigantic shape and start putting on all the details so if we look at this area of the sky um Again, we can see from the middle of the page slightly to the left here. I know it's probably not a precise way of describing things, but um, in the middle of the page, we've got like this tower that sort of pops out. So it sort of starts around here. Then we've got the buildings kind of coming in. So we can start getting these buildings in and popping in a little bit of detail, um, just indication of where it hits the sky. I haven't done this. I haven't done this particular scene before. So hopefully, hopefully guys, it turns out Okay, nothing worse than when you're drawing these things live and it ends up looking um, you know, not not what you expected. But you know, it's uh, it's always always like a good challenge. Um, so what we're going to do this building here? Um, it finishes around about halfway, and actually, there's more. There's a bit more of an angle, so it comes down more like this. So um, I'm going to just bring that down, kind of around here. Remember, it doesn't need to be perfect. And if you make a mistake, so here I've made a bit of a, a mistake. I've kind of made the angle of that line a bit too, um, it, it's not steep enough. Just leave it and continue on. There's also a kind of building here that pops out um, to the side like that there. And then there's like a edge of that building like this. A very, very slight edge, but that comes down here like that there. Um, this little bit of the building here that pops out, that, that comes down here. Okay, and look at the way that I sort of draw the lines um, as well. You don't have to get that line all in one go. It's easier to draw a line in small segments at times, because if you commit to that line and you draw it all the way down like that, sometimes if it, if you're going on a, on a funny little tangent, it's, it becomes more uh, difficult to change the direction of that line. So um, what I'm doing is that I'm essentially just putting in this area where we've got the sky. Okay, so, um, and using these buildings to kind of cut around. So again, looking at the middle of the page um, here, sort of where this building, the left edge of the building, and uh, this tower and the buildings to the left-hand side kind of finish, finishes off. We go a little bit to the right there. We might end the set of buildings here. So I'm just marking out where I want it to, to draw this line in. And then we've got it finishing off around about here. So I'm going to draw a line um, just going across like that. It doesn't have to be, um, you can just sort of graze the paper as well. Don't feel like you have to um, draw that line in completely, um, you know, all the way dark or whatever. It's just a, just a little trick that I do. And I'm going to bring this down here. This area, yeah. The pen I'm using. I'm using a um, using the one that's got a um, smaller nib. That's okay. I'm gonna swap to the 0.5. Sometimes I get the lids mixed up, and yeah, I'm wondering why these lines are a bit thin. Okay, so. Another thing you want to keep in mind is that you've got overlapping shapes here. You've got all these figures and people, things like that, but you've also got like this umbrella shape. So, you know, it's just a triangle. Just look at it as a triangle. We're going to put one in like that. Okay. And there's another one here. We can pop in just to the right hand side of it. Um, like that. And it's important to pop these things in because they overlap with the actual um, you know, scenes and the buildings in front. So it, it creates that illusion of depth when you've got overlapping areas. 
and you know you can always draw over previous lines so here for example i can draw in a you know a little triangle here to indicate a um you know a, an umbrella here as well but i find that it works better when you kind of plan around and, and sort of get it to go in front of those lines just um creates that that feeling of depth a lot uh, more so um now we're going to look at this tower we know that it falls in between here and here so what I'll do first is mark out the top of it. So just around here, I'm just going to pop, pop in a little dot. Um, so this is so that I just don't go overboard with some of these sections to the right. So there is a, I'm not sure what this is, a kind of rooftop area like that. And that kind of comes up there. And then I'm just going to bring this all the way down like this. And um, let's have a look. It's a kind of like, I'm not sure what this is. It's a kind of darker area a bit of hatching so just to, to darken an area with with pen if you choose to you just basically uh draw a bunch of lines going in the same direction like that you can also just color in this area with your pen too so it's just a way of, of implying depth uh tone sorry and you can Hatch in the opposite directions uh, to, to create uh, some cross hatching pattern, which just further darkens the area. Um, what I'm going to do as well, I'm just going to start drawing in some little heads of figures and things here, kind of what um, I was doing before with the group of figures, but I'm going to just make some smaller ones um, here in the distance. Okay, just to remind me that there's people here. Okay. Fantastic. Um, and then we've also got an area. We know that the, the buildings, this building on the right-hand side, it finishes just below the middle of the page. So um, there's that really big figure on the front right corner. And uh, you can see the building just sort of going right underneath her neck like that. So I'm just going to indicate where that is. Um, I'm sure a very light line here. I don't wanna, just as an indication. So then when I draw the figures in the front, um, I can make them go over that area still and then the same thing here for that one so you know it finishes around about here that and then goes straight in and finishes off here around here actually that right um so continuing on um, pop in this little arch yeah And you've got obviously these figures and things so i'm going to start popping in maybe a little indication of their bodies as well just the torso little torso for these ones too and um you know that couple here as well just really don't need much detail in that area as well okay a couple of legs here in the background um Probably leave the legs for the other ones till later. I don't want to just want to make sure I can get some other figures here in the foreground that overlap. And this is what I mean. So I can now just sort of cross hatch and cut around these these figures because I'd planned um, and I put them in beforehand. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do next is we're going to start working a little bit on the buildings, just separating the buildings out into uh, different sections. So it's quite um, got three buildings here on the right hand side. So um, I'm going to just start drawing lines, just general lines downwards to separate these buildings out. So we've got one here, um, you know, we've got one around about here, Oop, yeah, around about here. So I'm, I'm sort of basing these lines on uh, these two little umbrellas that I've drawn in here. So you can see one umbrella fit, sort of starts tip of the umbrella starts beginning of this building and then right here we've got a line and then another line here so I'm using I'm using um, other objects that I've drawn in to inform where to put in um, other shapes and other boundaries of other buildings so that's why it's important to get in the, like really general structure first okay um, Great. That's another bit of the building here. That there. 
Um, there's really quite a lot going on in here. So we're going to, we're going to simplify this down. There's so many windows. We don't need to pop them, uh, obviously all of them in. A bit of the side of that building here. Okay. And all these buildings here, they also have uh, these little segments and things in there. The difference is, is that we've got these, um, interesting shades, these, uh, yeah, these, these sort of shades are in the sunlight and they're really important because it's going to create a bit of contrast. So I'm going to just work on this little bit first and uh, we'll get in this area here at the front. It's a kind of like pillar, uh, the side of a building. That's going to go straight up like that. Yeah. The, um, the scene, edge of that building there. Um, another thing is we've got this umbrella here at the front. See, again, it's best to get it in before you draw that line. But if you can't, or if you've forgotten like I have, that's fine as well. You can just sort of go in and um, draw it in. So this is a just little, little kind of umbrella, not umbrella, a shade, essentially. That. Pop in some of these little frilly things here at the bottom. So got some little lines like this. That. Okay, great. And um, continue, continue on. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw the line that sort of goes just above all of these shades. So it starts around about here, um, just the darkness of the building, sl just slightly above the shades. And I'm going to draw that and connect it up all the way down here. Um, obviously, we've got a few other windows. And, you know, there's a larger window here too at the bottom. But the last umbrella kind of finishes about Keep saying umbrella the, the last shade finishes around about here okay so i'm going to connect this line up to this area here just to be big line put that in yes okay fantastic and this is going to allow us um essentially to get in some of these umbrella these these um these shade shade shapes so pop that in there. I'm gonna follow this perspective. That one. There. Getting in a few of these rules quite quickly. Um we're gonna do this one as well here. Comes out and now, I'm kind of basing them quite loosely on what's there too. So basically just bits of bits of white. A bit a bit more smaller and things here in the in the back. Okay. There we go. Um so that's that's the uh, that's ma that main area, I suppose, of uh, these uh, these shades. And while uh, we've got all these shades and things, I'm going to start drawing in some more figures in the foreground. Awnings, awnings. Yes, Amy, that's it. Awnings. Of uh, I must still be asleep this morning. <laughs> Um, just checking the chats again. Uh, we on hi, sweet. Welcome, welcome to the, to the workshop. And we've got Riaz Ahmed, um, ja, ja Austria. Welcome, Claudia Zent from New Hampshire, US, and Glenda from Wollongong, New South Wales. Welcome, Glenda. Okay. Um. So what we're going to do? We're going to start using um you know there's so many figures here and 
the the idea is not to put all of them in. We just want to put some of them in and um, use their poses and stuff as a reference so that you're not completely drawing from memory. I find it quite difficult to draw figures in, in specific poses from memory. So that's why I do like using references like this. Um, so what I'm going to do is there's a larger figure here, a woman which ha uh, she's holding a couple of sunflowers. And what we can do is actually start popping her in. So we know that her head's just around about here. So I'm just going to draw in a general outline of her head. And you can hold the pen, make sure you hold the pen quite loosely as well. So then if you have to alter things, it's not too um, obvious. Okay, so we've got the head here. And then um, shoulders, oops, shoulders. And the shirt she's wearing, the top that she's wearing, this white top, and comes around here like that. Um, look. Shoulder coming out this side there. And that sort of comes in like that. Quick. Comes in. And her elbow out about here okay just get in her other arm sort of coming forwards like that okay um she's got like a bag or something like that as well just get in, in her neck a bit more like that um, it looks like there's a kind of bag Holding on to as well, so it sticks out the side here. So look at it as just shapes. I mean, this is just a just look at that as a rectangle on its side, little handles or something like that. Here, um, this is the part of a dress there. So we just sketch in a few little bits and pieces, and I know it finishes around about here. Um, just a few more bits and pieces. Coming in, um, and we've got her feet here. Back of the shoe. That there. Another leg here. Just we pop that in quite quickly. Um, probably go in there again and just uh, change things up a bit. But we've also got a few other figures. Um, we can get, uh, you know, some here as well. Maybe a head of a couple of other figures in front. And you do the larger ones first, so then the ones in the back they can be used to kind of cut around. Um, you know, here's one maybe here. The Um, like that, and uh, one of the legs going forwards here. Yeah. This leg just sort of behind, like that. There, okay. Pop in some shoes side, like that. Even put in things like little, you know, sunglasses and things on these figures nose, bit of hair, that sort of thing, and pop in a few others. Um, and when you're sketching on, on site as well, you'll find that there's just pretty much unlimited inspiration to draw from. There's people moving in all kinds of directions. Um, so Sheila Rodriguez has a question. Is it true that heads should be at vanishing point height to achieve perspective. So if you're implying uh, a flat scene, so um, basically the scene is completely flat, then all the heads should line up on the horizon line. So that's what I'm doing here. So all the heads uh, are roughly in the same location. And you will notice that if you, if, if you do like some heads that are, uh, say if you want to imply a sloping sort of direction going down, then the heads at the back will actually be a lot lower down. Than the ones here in the foreground and that will imply that sort of a slope and 
you know, in opposite ways, True's Wolf, you've got um, shapes, uh, some of the heads that are slightly going up here in the background. It's just going to make it look like the that the the figure's walking up a um, a hill or something like that. So yeah, it's really yeah, it's really important. Um, yeah, really important thing to to keep in mind. So good question, Sheila. Okay. Um, here's another figure. I say I put this one in already, and I might pop a hat on him or something like that. There. Let's just drop in a few bits and pieces. Maybe for his leg, a leg here in the front, and a leg here, kind of going backwards like that um, and the great thing is yeah having these shapes overlapping it just makes it look a lot more interesting okay maybe he's got some shorts on so i can just pop in some shorts like that okay there's an arm um okay. usually usually i'm a little bit quicker drawing these in so more you know a few more heads and you notice these ones are a little bit taller. That's fine. So um, we can just draw in a couple there. Uh, maybe like another head here. There. Uh, yeah, there's a child here. I don't know if I'll, I'll do that. I don't know if I'll get that child in. We'll see. Let's try to get in a few more figures. So this one standing kind of on his, on his side the upright there arms sort of coming out there and then the legs I'm just going to put coming down like this okay sort of standing upright like that um and he's got like a backpack on here let's just pull that on scribble that on something like that um fantastic so the reason why I'm doing all these figures first is because if you look at the, the entire scene, the figures are always in front. So if you draw them first and then you draw the shops and things like that at the back, it's just going to look a lot better. The lines it's, aren't going to interrupt and cut through the figures. Try to draw these bigger ones as well first. Guy's got his... Oops, it's kind of hard to draw because I've got another one here next to him with his... Uh, intersecting but that's all right just to make this one up coming down here got a jumper or a jacket on that go Another one walking towards the scene. Yeah. Oops. That. Put a bit of hair on this one. They're kind of facing towards the back. So. Yeah. Now, you know, you find that when you're actually drawing these, not from a reference photo, but. Uh, yeah, just from from life, you're really doing these as quick as you can because you don't have the luxury to actually hang around and try to um, get everything in. Sometimes I get quite into the reference photo, but often, you know, in a scene like this, when you're walking around, you've only got a, a minute to draw in a person. So you learn how to do it um, quite efficiently, actually, on site. And you're in an area where the shirt cuts off around about here. There, again, just pop in two legs downwards. That's yeah. Oops, it's all right. There. Um, just thinking whether I should have a bigger one. I feel like I need a larger one here in the front or something like that. But we'll see how we go. These ones I can just connect the legs up downwards like that now. There. A few more, maybe pop in one here at the front. That. Again, it's overlapping. 
that. Um, you know, you can even have a person walking on a on an angle. Yeah, it's a little big. Let me just smaller. Put it on a tilt. Pop a leg coming forwards like that, and another leg going towards the back. So it looks like that figure's walking from right to left. Okay. Um, and having yeah, just variations in how the figures appear, I find that really helps. You know, these two people might be talking. Try to put in a bit of detail for this figure. And uh, there, just a bit of a shirt. Maybe they're just having a discussion about something. Uh, child here. Smaller. It's like this, walking around. Shorts on. Just get the legs on. There, there we go. Child. And um, some legs for this one. Maybe facing towards the front well sort of standing upright so I can draw both legs kind of in this way oops will be it and leg or something there as well um little props and just add on a bit of hair and someone had commented on uh, some of the recent sketches I've done I've just been putting in a lot of crazy hair on people uh, <laughs> like this one here um I don't know how I got into doing that I was just I don't know I guess I just got a bit bored and and th thought I wanted to change things up as well um it, it makes an area of contrast it's funny that sort of draws the eye into it but you know the, the main point is just try to put some different clothes on people try to you know this one here maybe he's wearing a jacket um you know look at different different uh, reference photos of of people and use them in your scenes and that way you can use their poses and things like that to tell a story which is pretty important i think there's maybe i know there's a child here but i don't really feel that i, I need a kind of larger figure walking in i'm just trying to see I can spot person in there that I can use as a reference. So maybe like I could pop in a person here wearing a cap. Look, pop in the cap there. Person and then the head there. That. Pop that. Then we've got the shirt or the sleeve elbow yeah wrist there back of the shirt sort of coming down here that coming up and then uh, pop in some shorts uh kind of like a teenager or Legs coming down. The one thing to keep in mind is that when you're drawing figures uh, closer to the foreground, you just got to pay a bit more attention to uh, the details. Just quick indications of shoes, socks. Okay. On the other hand. Up in a hand here, side. Who knows what he's doing? He's looking over to that side. You know, looking to see where else I might want to add in a bit more detail. Um, maybe a few more over this side. Um, 
yeah, let's pop in a few more, just a couple of people walking um, in this sort of direction. So shoulders, as lady sort of walking forwards in that sort of direction. Oops, too much hair there, but we'll uh, continue on. Arms going forwards, and then uh, you know, I've got a, wearing a kind of white top that. Oops, pop in leg here at the front and leg going backwards like that. Bag or something there. Um, we've also got a really large uh, figure here at the front. So what I'll do, I'll, let's let's pop in that figure as well. Okay, so the head just kind of got a cap here. That's just um, around about this section. Let me have a look here. Cap and uh, bring that across. Kind of goes out of the photo. Bit of hair, um, especially wearing some kind of lanyard or something here, coming down the neck and um, shoulders, uh, neck and the shoulders. Put off this area where the end of her the shirt sort of finishes off, the top finishes off. And then there's a kind of strap here, um, and here's a shoulder. Okay. Um, arm coming through, finishing off about there, and then we'll get in the rest of the shirt. Kind of coming up like that. Having a larger figure in the foreground, I think that's going to help draw the, the eye through. I really like this this photograph because of that actually. Okay, so pop in a leg like that. Um, another leg here. Just finish this off. This strap. That shirt here. Something like that. Okay. Um, looking looking good. Um, so I think I've sort of had to play around these figures enough now we'll go in and just add in the remaining details so i've gotten to put this tower in so i'm just going to go ahead and slightly draw it in so remember how we've kind of marked off the top of the tower um this is where i'm just going to pop the dome up in here like that and uh, work my way through like that there bring this all the way and that little top part there uh there is a area here i think this is a bell tower it's definitely bell tower because i can see a bell in there this section here is a kind of i don't know what this is circular sort of structure probably means something um anyone's been here before they put no okay and this area here which i'm just going to connect up to the side rooftop little um bits and pieces signs and things like that here so just take that as a rough guide in terms of uh, what to add in and I'm gonna just color in a bit here as well just make it look like there's a doorway or something underneath yeah frame these ones I can just pretty up a bit like that uh, I tend to go overboard with all of these details at times and quite relaxing actually I find sort of drawing them in and figuring it out along the way. It's like solving a puzzle. I find doing these little drawings. And you know, there's actually a mountain or something going in the background. Let me put it in later, we'll see. Uh, on the top of these buildings, there's like these kind of structures that pop out the top. Um, I'm really not gonna really not gonna try too hard with these. 
a little bit like that, it's fine. Then we're going to start separating these, uh, this building up. So, um, it's really quite a lot going on here. There's four rows, four rows of these kind of windows and doors. Um, I think what I'll do is that I'll just separate the building first into half, um, but we'll bring, bring the entire building down um, and finish it off first. Copying this last figure. Finish it off because we know that it kind of comes out around about here. There. There. Cut through those figures. Right. Um, so separate this building into half, something like that. Okay. The reason why I'm doing this is so we can get these top two areas of the windows, these win two let two rows of windows in, and two rows of windows underneath. Um, and you know we're not gonna really, uh, I'm not gonna be exact here, but it's just the only way that I think we can do it quickly. There's one. Um, just having a look. Yeah, one, two. Three, four, here, got bits and pieces on top of the window as well, got more up the top, these four little, four little ones, one, two, three, four, okay. And notice I'm lining the windows up so they're directly um, opposite each other. That's really going to help. Um, another thing I do is these little perspective lines that I'm just drawing through here, I'm using them to sort of uh, draw the windows in the same direction. So that's why it helps to have this line here. Then you know that the lines of these windows are going to follow these um, perspective lines. It's very hard. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, you know, if you, the best way really is to uh, maybe look at some perspective, one point um, perspective, one point two point perspective tutorials online. Um, that you can watch through lots of you know YouTube and stuff like that, and that's really going to help you to understand how to draw these draw these in a bit better. So, but a lot of it's just practice, observation. That's how I kind of learnt anyway. So got here this is the side this is the side of a building that's all good um let's go ahead get in these other ones and we'll separate this one out as well just a little line here yeah one two three four four little windows uh, we've also got like you know there's a lamp here you know this is these are these little areas and little bonus bonus bits that you can add in that do make a difference but it's optional i mean sometimes it's a bit a bit much and you can spend all day just doing this and not being a bit much but um that's a little section you can add in Um, uh, yeah, and feel free to ask questions if you if you're um, wondering what I'm doing. <laughs> Sometimes I don't really know what uh, unless you tell me. Okay. But, okay. So yeah, I'm going to speed this all up and start popping in, you know, these little areas here, just these, some of these little doors and stuff here, like that, well, um, and you can hatch them away like I'm doing, or you can also get them in in watercolors later on too. Once you've done one of these buildings, it becomes a lot easier to do the rest of them. So you can start going in and just popping in the windows for these ones. There's like four on each section. This one's got lots of going on. So 
remember to make the window smaller as they go back as well. Um, tend to just draw the tops and the, and the bottoms and the little line at the top like that. Sort of marks out where it begins there. It's quite difficult as you go further on, depending on the type of you know, the size of the paper that you're working on, it can be a few more doors and things that use them to kind of cut around the figures as well. Okay, um, these ones in the background, I'm really just gonna color them in that. I don't wanna sit around all day trying to do this. So just simplify that down a bit like that. There. That should do the trick. You can always go back in afterwards once the the uh, painting is done and add in some more details if you want. Okay. Um, another thing we got to do is just pop in some arches and things for these uh, buildings. So there's little doors, little openings here. There's a uh, one that sort of intersects here, and it kind of comes out here on that side. Comes down here. That kind of like the opening of this shop go inside, and you know, I like this. This building's just got these little bricks and things on it, which I like drawing on as well. Little, just pick out a few, and um, and oops, this should be an angle. Okay. Right. Um, the arch of this building in there, and yeah, just really um, a bit of a play around and use that reference picture um, to try to find a few more doors and areas you can draw out and um, pop in there that another thing I like to do as well at this stage is that I like to just start drawing some uh, directional lines so uh, basically just with pick a point up here just underneath the buildings and I'm just going to draw a line emanating from that point it's just really basic sort of one point perspective oops just draw that this one line coming down yeah. one's a bit wonky but we'll uh fix it up We've got so many things going on here on the ground. Um, what I like to do is just start putting in some bricks and things here. You can do this afterwards too. But this again just helps the perspective. Like that. Little bricks and things. Bring them on. I'm going to draw every single brick, just a few. And simplifying it down from the reference as well so that it doesn't, you know, this is actually a lot more complicated what's going on in here.
bit more here where this figure is standing. That. Yeah. Okay. You can always go back in there and change it up later, add some more in. Uh, this is looking all right. Okay. All right, um, let's have a look. This stuff here, there's, there's a lot of detail um, behind these, these awnings, but uh, a lot of it's just gonna be in the dark. So if you look at it, this is the only area of light. And then underneath it's just, Almost complete darkness. Um, so we're going to get in this last, just finish off really this last uh, building. We know that there is a separation here. It's going down that building. About halfway through the entire block of buildings, roughly halfway. But there, and it sort of runs down the back of. Okay, and two rows, two rows of um of these windows and things here. Pop that in there. Uh, these ones are further separated. There's almost there's a few different separations here. I'm just gonna make them up. Put one here, another one here, another one here spacing between the separations become smaller as you go back as well. Little perspective trick. Looks like there's quite a few little buildings up in the back like that. And again, let's uh, start popping in some, some windows and you know, I'd like to just, yeah, just put in the tops of them like a few indication, then I'll go window. Mainly these ones in the foreground that are closer that you got to detail a bit extra. Try to get it in the first go like that. You fiddle around too much and then the area just becomes, looks too detailed. One, two, and these other ones are just small. You can see what's going on back there. The windows. Yeah. one up okay. See? Oh. or windows these ones aren't perfect but top of that building where we can again just start to actually outline the tops of these buildings a bit extra a uh, bit more draw them out i know before we went through and we did them in quite a light sort of line so this helps to just reinforce the boundary. You know, here there's four more. Four more. Let's draw these in. One, two, three, four. Marking out the bottoms. We're just going to draw these lines going up like that. One, two. Starting around. Four. That. Um, these ones are quite a little bit more complicated actually, but we'll just simplify them down. That. Carry on that section of buildings. Okay. Put in a few little separations here. Get in some of those window sills as well. Not really. Well, they are there, but. Okay. Right. Um...
more little bricks on the buildings. But I think we should pretty much be ready um, to start popping in some color in here. Okay. Um, yeah, this is this is looking a little more detailed than I than I thought. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, yeah, just you know pop them in the in the chat. You can see there's quite a few people watching watching along. Got almost a hundred people here in this in this live. Um, the sketch. Honestly, I, I feel like I could do a much better sketch um, this morning. I don't know. It just hasn't worked out exactly the way that I thought um, that I wanted it to, to work out. But you know what? We're going to continue anyway. And often this, this happens. It's a learning, learning process. But we've got all of the um, essential elements on here. We've got figures and we've got the awnings. And we just need to put on, put on a lot of the darkness and the shadows in there. Oh, Yvette looks good. Thanks, Yvette. <laughs> Glad you like it. And a few more chats here. She, um, Lojin, uh, hi. Nice to see you again. And Rupa, Rupa Meta, we from California. Welcome, Rupa. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to start uh, getting in some colors in here. So I'll show you what I'm going to be using. I've just got. Um, Palette here on the side. I'll move the move this a bit more. Move this a little bit more to the left so you guys can see uh the palette that I'm using. That should give you guys enough room. Um Danita Reynolds looks great to me. I've learned a lot. Thank you. Appreciate it, Danita, and thanks for thanks for coming along. Kate, Kate Wilcock. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, appreciate it. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and get in some colors. And if we look at the buildings, pretty much almost everything in here is has this kind of uh, creamy yellow color. It's kind of like a Naples yellow to a yellow ochre. Now, I always keep a little bottle of gouache on me. And if you guys, um, you know, if you guys don't have any... Uh, you know this kind of opaque sort of yellow paint just use any yellow that you've got um, i'm going to be using a bit of uh, or a bit of everything really so i've got here some uh lemon yellow which we're just going to drop in to the buildings but if you compare it to say this one here this is a bit of naples yellow you have notice there's quite a, a little bit of a difference so this this one here on the right it's kind of creamier it's kind of like a sandy sort of color um you can mix your you, you can mix your, your, your normal yellows with a little bit of white gouache to get it to this sort of color, um, which is more accurate to this actual painting uh, reference picture. But again, it's not, um, it's not a, a matter of trying to replicate the reference picture exactly. I, I really need to stress that, but it's just something, um, if you want to get that exact color, and I find it, you know, especially in, in Venice, a lot of the buildings, they have that sort of sandy sort of color to it, um, sandy yellow kind of color. So that works quite well. Um, the tops of these buildings, you know, we've got a dash of, dash of, what's this, uh, burnt sienna. A little bit of burnt sienna on here. Drop that in like that. Um, a lot of it really is just this Naples yellow. You know, so I'm gonna go over, let's, let's do this building all in one go here in the background. Naples yellow, this clock tower, there we go. And the top of it, as a kind of, it's actually slightly cool, slightly cool. So I'm going to drop in a tiny bit of, a bit of blue, a bit of blue up the top there. It'll probably turn a turquoisey color, like that. Um, there. There we go. And um, continue on with this section. Uh, we're just, we're just going to put in a really basic wash of color over the top. The consistency of the paint I'm using is about one quarter paint to three quarters water. So that's going to get you a consistency that um, a really light color that goes over the top. Because what we're painting at the moment is we're, we're painting the, the, the light. Um, so we, we don't want to go too dark in these areas. This area in, in, the, in the side here, um, it doesn't matter all that much because it's actually, it's actually in darkness. Um, 
So we'll go through later and darken off that building a bit more. I'm just dropping in a bit of color, a bit of darker color in there. Um, but, you know, for areas such as the ground, um, you really want to make sure that you've got uh, quite a light wash running through there. And that's Naples yellow. But again, if you don't have that, just use what you've got. Use this, this yellow here is very bright and vibrant. You can use that too. It's just a lemon yellow. Cut around the figures. So, uh, you know, just kind of bits get through here. Oh, it's in the way. Um, You know what, I might swap to this larger mop brush. Quicker. Drop that in. That yellow is just, one is just yellows running through here. These umbrellas. Yeah, they're actually kind of, leave them white. You can always go through it later and darken it down. Leave a bit of light on them. There. more yellow a few different colors here and you, you, you know just um again cutting around these figures because if we leave leave that we're going to be able to get in some colors over the top without it mixing around with the, the yellow and sort of getting muddy one of the ways to avoid kind of muddiness in, in your paintings and um, you notice I don't really do much mixing on my palette as well. I try to actually mix most of the colors on the paper. Um, they they just tend to look fresher. And, you know, I, I find like uh, with this particular style where I'm, you know, I tend to use a lot of vibrant colors. Uh, I, you know, it just works out better if I do it this way. And you get some really cool combinations of colors, um, like mixes of colors here that, from the paint just essentially uh, mixing with itself and doing its own thing so okay these little shades they do have a tiny bit of color in them it's almost like a little light wash of naples yellow um, so i'm going to just go over the top of those go over really the top of the entire the entire thing because um just doing all the lighter sections first. So more yellow, you know, running through here. What else have we got? We've just got a bit more, a bit more yellow, Naples yellow here, down to the ground. And uh, main thing is, look, just cut around the figures as as well as you can, uh, like that. But everything else, just get in different. Types of yellows. So you can even put a bit of red. So let's pop in a bit of is that red. This is red. Hang on. A bit of red or something like that in here as well. Change things up. A bit, a bit in here. That. There. there. We go. Look. There we go. Or this sort of sandy color. Naples yellow down the front. There. Um. Fantastic. More, just a bit more vibrancy. Yellow. Dropping in a bit more of uh, lemon yellow in here. A bit more going on. More volume. Okay, great. Um, so now we'll do the sky uh, to make it easier. I'm going to swap to a smaller round brush. And this tower should pretty much be dried now. And I'm going to pick up a bit of cerulean blue. Okay, just a little bit of cerulean blue. Drop that straight in to this sky area. Okay. And, and again, the, the consistency here is about uh, one quarter paint to three quarters water. You notice... Um, because I haven't sticky taped down my, my paper uh, or anything, it's kind of starting to warp a little bit. And make do. Fine, like with this, the first larger wash, um, it tends to make your paper warp a bit. So I'm touching it onto some parts of the buildings as well. You know, let's let it mix and mingle in areas. That, here's a little bit of this tower. Yeah. Where are the shadows coming from? So they're coming from right to left. So it's gonna 
yarn and cut around that tower. A bit more blue, a little bit more blue in here. Cerulean blue there and that. Just like that. Don't worry if it mixes a bit into the buildings. Okay. That is pretty much the sky done. Um, and we're going to play around. Let's pop in a few colors for the figures. Here's a bit of blue for this, um, this dress here around the side. Um, top's white. I'm going to leave that. Um, this one here, I think I'll go with some purplish color. A bit of just a light wash of purple. Like that over the top there. Keeping things uh, really quite light at this stage. Let's darken down pants. A bit of red mixed in there. A little bit more darkness. So I'm going to do just something like that. Around in there. Uh, maybe the hat. I'll go with a bit of blue. It's actually kind of a light blue color. Um, there, just a tiny bit of blue. Cut that in. That. Um, and remember, we're not really trying to get in any uh, detail or anything in, in here. We're just trying to go on some basic colors. Um, there's another one there. And I, I like to use cooler colors, especially in this wash, because you've got all this yellow and stuff here in the background. I always structure. Um, Always think about before I even paint like what kind of color scheme I'm going to use that we can get some more contrasting colors in here. Um, this figure here, I mean, you don't even need to 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 color in the shirt. You can just leave that. Um, maybe get in a little wash of this gray left like that. That figure. What have we got? Bit of blue, it's popping a bit of blue here. Um bit of maybe a bit of pink or something for this figure here in the front. Yeah. And all my colours just tend to mix together at this point on the palette, so that's a bit um muddy sometimes. But uh, it does help when you pick the colour straight up from the palette and apply it, but it takes a bit of practice just to know. Um how to do it so that you don't put too much color on. So I tend to just um, pick up a little bit of color and then drop it into the um, into the water, drop the brush into the water, and it just um, kind of dilutes that color a little bit, and then I'll apply it directly on. So that the red there, okay. So we want just a little little splashes of color, and. Another thing I, I want to do as well is just get in a little bit of pink. So I like to use some, basically some red, and then we can just pop in a bit of pink um, for, you know, different skin tones. You can also use, uh, you know, a bit of burnt sienna as well. It really just depends on um, the sort of skin tones you want to pop in here. But really light wash. Really light wash. Um, just a little arm, face there, legs, their head there, the person's head there. Arm coming out. Plastic. Oh, the I uh, got a question from Jen Philabella. So, uh, cerulean blue looks very bright in cameras. Which brand is it? Um, I, I honestly I use so many different brands. Uh, this one here is Magello. I think so that the palette I'm using is a Schmincke, Schmincke palette, but you know, look, as long as you've got an artist grade 
watercolor paint, you, you'll be completely fine. There's so, um, there's more similarities between the artist uh, grade brands, like, you know, Winsor & Newton, um, Schmincke, uh, geez, what else, Holbein, Mijello, Daniel Smith. There's more similar, uh, similarities than there are differences. What you want to look for, though, with the uh, Cerulean Blues is that uh, whether it's granulating or not. So this is a non-granulating Cerulean Blue, so it just looks a little bit smoother. I used to work mainly with uh, granulating uh, Ceruleans because... Uh, I, I find when I'm doing just normal landscapes, not line and wash landscapes, um, you can get some really beautiful um, areas of, um, you know, high and low pigment concentrations and when it dries. So, yeah, a non-granulating cerulean blue. Um, yeah, that's essentially what I'm using, and it's actually cheaper than the granulating stuff. So, yeah. Uh, Jen, mine is Winsor Newton cerulean blue. Yep. Um, yeah, I, don't, I haven't used haven't used that one before. Uh, just make sure, yeah, when you're applying the cerulean blue, just apply it uh, quite lightly. Uh, one of the um, things I did when I started out was I just really, you know, you know, um, applied it way too thickly onto the paper, and uh, it loses that vibrancy. You got to remember with watercolors, it needs to be transparent, so you can only push it to a certain point. Um, and and then it just becomes kind of opaque. So um, it's funny because it starts when you're putting on this first wash, it looks all quite weak and wishy washy, and you're like, oh, you know, I need to make it darker and stuff. But it's all kind of an illusion because later when you pop in all the shadows and the dark bits, all these lighter sections will just pop out of the of the page. So you've got to bear with it. Yvette uh, is asking, what brush is that? So. Um, yeah, I've, it's, it's a brush that I, uh, these guys from Zen Art, they sent to me a, a little while back. Um, I haven't pop, popped the, I'll pop the link in the, in the description or, or whatever. I'll send you the, the link later, uh, for them. But yeah, they just kind of reached out to me and sent me a bunch of these, these, uh, what are they? Synthetic brushes. So I use mainly synthetic brushes these days. They, they hold a point very nicely and I find they just last a lot longer. Um, yeah, so we're really at the point here where we just want to let it dry off. Um, I'm going to speed up this process. So I'm just going to pause the, uh, pause the audio for a little bit and I'll get back to you. Okay, um, everything's all pretty much dried off now. And uh, what we want to do is start adding in all the, the shadows and um, little, bits of, little bits of detail. So what I'm going to do first, actually, um, I'm going to simplify this down a, a fair bit. Um, 
all these buildings on the right here and then some of this building here uh, you can see that it's actually a little bit darker than uh, all these buildings here on the on the left which are directly in the sunlight so um, comparing the tone of this building versus uh, these set of buildings versus all these buildings you're going to want to make these all a little bit darker so i'm going to apply a light wash of uh, maybe like a purplish uh, purplish color over the top there and at the same time i'm going to join on some shadows running through and we're going to pop on the shadows of the the feet legs of everything of the people so um, in terms of mixing up a dark color there's a few options so you can mix up your three primaries so you can look what i'm doing it's basically a bit of red a little bit of um ultramarine and a little bit of lemon yellow uh not an exact sort of science but uh, but i put a little bit more blue in there so that i can get um a grayish blue okay so that's one way that you can make uh, your darks another thing you can just mix your bit of ultramarine with a tiny bit of uh, burnt umber that makes a pretty dark juicy sort of color as well like this um, and you vary the proportions of of um, burnt umber and and the ultramarine so if you want it warmer put more burnt umber if you want it cooler put in a little bit more of that ultramarine so we've got two different kind of grays. There's one there, there's one there. Um, just thinking, how else do I mix up a gray? Uh, I've, you know, I've got a little cheating way, which I just basically use, neutral tint, um, which I've just mixed up here. This is a... So I've got a few different colors, uh, a few different grays to use, and I always just drop in a few others as well uh, while the page is still wet. So this is what I'm doing, let's just pop darkness over this side um thinking whether i want to get in i think we'll be all right but let's, let's just cut around remember the roof of this building is slightly illuminated as well yeah cut around that bit um there's also little signs and things here which we can just cut around and leave okay, but for the most part this is what i'm doing i'm just coloring in this whole section yeah and we want it dark but not um, as dark as the shadows on uh, that the buildings are, are casting because what's happening here actually is that the light from these buildings here are kind of reflecting um, onto these buildings here and so the shadow actually cast by this building is going to be darker than the building itself that's kind of what I think is going on anyway. More darkness. Simplify it down. Just pop all that, just pop it all in the same color. Cut around this little lamp. Well, yeah. Uh, this section, just kind of darken that up. Look, look. You can leave in some uh, little highlights of yellow like I'm doing in here as well. Kind of obliterate the entire thing. Here we go. We've got this little preserved section of white. Um, and I'm going to just get that little shadow. There's actually shadow just crossing crossing the, um, the umbrella like that. Just right in there. Rest of it underneath. Press underneath. And this is a hair or not. The hair. Oh, damn. That's all right. I've gone over that, um, gone over that light. Enthusiastic. Cut around those figures and things there. Okay, great. And, uh, now what we're going to need to do is mix up a slightly darker gray. So I'm going to just use, uh, I've got a bit of neutral tint in here. Darken this down a bit more. 
I want to create more contrast. So we've actually got a, a, a bit of light running through this section here, which I'm going to emphasize there. Oops. It's sort of finishes off here. There's a little slither of light running through a section there. Be very careful at this point. Um, Again, the shadow that's cast all the way through there, finishing, finishing around where this person's arm is, bottom of the arm. And why, why am I doing this? Why am I sort of getting the shadow to sort of intersect and everything? Well, we've got all these light figures uh, in the in the foreground, so. Um, in the light. So if we've got this sort of darker shape running towards, um, you know, intersecting through them, it's going to draw out the light on the figures. Right. Um, and, you know, I'm swapping to a smaller round brush now. This is a uh, number six round brush and I'm going to pick up some more of this neutral tint and start popping in um, some details for the dress so there's some tiny little bits of darkness in areas yeah and uh, it runs down the back there for a head you know we can also add in a little red in there I think it just was a bit too a little bit too dark. That's a little bit of red. And um, so the dress, that. Okay. There. And then we've got the legs, feet, the darkness there, and a bit of darkness underneath here. That. And I'm just going to create a shadow that's running across the ground like this. Uh, Yvette, yeah, that's correct. Uh, it's negative painting what we're doing here. So getting this, creating this um, dark shape, cutting around the lighter shapes, draw attention to the to the lighter shapes. So definitely on the ball there. Um, there we go. Shadow joining on to the legs, joining on to the body, like that. Um, we've got figure here in the foreground. And uh, we're going to play around with the light that there. The darkness running through the back of that figure. And then the pants are dark. More darkness in here. That. Especially because this figure's in the foreground, we really need to really darken things up more. That. Especially on that left hand side. I don't want to overdo it. Um, also, a kind of shadow underneath the neck, kind of cuts across here like that, something like that. There, do the trick. And with this one, these ones I've done it very loosely, so I don't really don't know what's going on with those. Um, Let's pop on the legs. Let's pop on the legs for these other ones in the back. Okay, so here's a leg there. Another one. Um, I'm going to use a thicker version of neutral tint. A bit more um, darkness here. Some of them. Okay, and the shadow underneath which kind of connects up the legs like that. There. A bit of shadow running to the left hand side. Connect them onto the legs. Do the legs and the shadows at the same time. Um, now, if you want to make some the, the legs a little bit lighter on some of the figures, what you can do, um, so say this one here, uh, we want to get in a bit of like reddish color. Uh, so, let's answer a question. So, uh, Jen, Jen's asking, I miss the skin color or mix you use. Can you tell me what you, uh, what did you use? So, um, with with the skin 
the flesh tones that I use, it really just depends. I, I use a mixture of um, permanent red, just to, you know, you can just use permanent red on its own, diluted down, that will produce a pink sort of skin tone. Um, you can also use uh, a little bit of burnt sienna and uh, dilute that down, or you can use it a little bit thicker if you want a, a slightly darker flesh tone. You can also use a bit of burnt umber. Um, another thing, another combination that I use is a bit of yellow ochre plus uh, pyral, pyral red. So the, the, you just got to experiment around. And um, <clears throat> if you've got a scrap bit of paper as well, just kind of have a play around uh, with the different flesh tones and um, that way when you actually start painting you have a better understanding of what uh, you'd be able to predict essentially what what it will dry like so I'll show you just how to make um, you know what we, we can do we can just get in say for example the legs for this one we can get in some pink oh didn't really work but a, a light pink maybe for this one yeah okay really light color and this one maybe a little bit darker and then what we can do, um, just lift off a little bit like that, um, is then we can just use the neutral tint to drop in the bottom of the legs. Oops. That, and then just draw that shadow going over to the left-hand side. That, just let it kind of mix in with the lighter sort of color as well. So it's another way, if you want to get the legs to have a, a, a you know, a lighter color or you want to get in some of these um, call them uh, colors of the shorts and stuff like that that works pretty well too and I'm gonna just keep making this faster essentially and get in these shadows as quickly as I can they're all running towards that left hand side you know? and, and look how they join up as well in the back these little ones they sort of everything just connects on everything connects on to each other it's really important to join up the foreground and the you know other shapes together that it all sort of looks um like a clump of if you look really close it doesn't look like anything but when you look at it from a distance um all the shadows just join on you get this shadow joining onto here which is joined onto these figures here and then these join onto these ones so it kind of flows rather than you have this disjointed um, I don't know how to explain it, but that's um, the best thing I sort of look for. I look for a general shadow shape that kind of weaves in and out of everything. And then what I'm going to do is connect it onto the darkness under here. So, you know, we've got a bit of, it's quite dark. So we're going to use, uh, we use a neutral tint there. And um, there's, a, there's a darkness underneath here. Um, Vary your darks as well. Don't just use the same one. I like to use, you know, I'm mixing up a bit of pink. What is it? I think it's magenta with a little bit of ultramarine, magenta and ultramarine, so that I can get a pinkish kind of color, um, maybe like a purplish color, and drop that in here as well. Cutting around these figures. It's probably 50% uh, water, 50% paint. Small brush for things in the back that and um touch and go touch and go so you're just getting it in with as few amount of brush strokes as possible lynn uh lynn cough love how the addition of the shadows and negative painting make the figures pop and look 3d yeah it's it's um it still amazes me to till this day and you know i used to just you know, I used to do the first wash and, you know, when I first started and I'd almost give up because I think this just doesn't really look like anything, but it's only until you add the shadows, um, which is what we're doing now. And then even one final layer where we're adding the, the final really dark bits on it, where things start actually looking 3D. And Laurie, Laurie Schwartz, uh, shadows are making a huge difference. Fantastic. Um, and, and, you know, if you've done, you know, I find with the painting, it also allows you to fix up a few things too. If you, if your drawing doesn't sort of, um, you know, if you're missing a few things in the drawing, you can go in with the brush and still alter, uh, alter it up a little bit. So that second opportunity that you get, 
Glenda, I had I had not heard of neutral tint before. Can you explain it again, please? So, um, look, neutral tint is just basically uh, it's basically a premixed gray. So, a lot of the manufacturers, what they do is that yeah, they they just mix up uh, from from what I'm aware of, a bit of blue, a bit of red, and a bit of uh, a bit of yellow together to make a a general gray. Uh, neutral gray tone so that when you mix that a uh, hue I mean when you mix that with like a, a bit of yellow um, it just darkens that yellow down so um, I, I use it when I've for example I've got a, a light purple or I've got a light green and I just want to make it a little bit darker I just add in a little bit of neutral tint in there but you don't need to buy neutral tint um, it's it's just a, it's one of those convenience colors and manufacturers often often sell it so um, you, you know, people, it, it may, you know, some people think it's a, a bit of a gimmick. I, I buy it because it's just easy, but what you can do is mix your three primaries together, just mix your, your red, yellow, and blue together, and you can make something quite similar. Um, the proportions of which I'm not sure, uh, but you know, the, you can put in a little bit more blue to make it, the shadows a little bit cooler, or you can make, uh, put a bit more red in the, there as well to have like a more of a, a warmer bias. So, um, if you're starting out, don't ever feel like you need to get one of those palettes with 20 colors or something like that. It doesn't really make a huge difference. Um, if you've just got your three primaries, a, a, a red, a yellow, and a blue of an artist grade watercolor, you can pretty much do everything. Because if you look at um, the painting that I've done here, I've, I've essentially just used three or four colors for the entire thing. And you can mix up everything else from that. So don't waste your money on buying, you know, 30 different paints. Though I have kind of done that myself. <laughs> okay. No worries, Laurie. Glad that I could help out. Okay. Uh, what are we up to? I think we're sort of in this section here. So we're going to go ahead and continue on and darken underneath. Yeah. Okay. You can take a bit of... You notice that I'm a bit more relaxed during this section of the painting as well because... You can actually take a bit more time um, to pop in the details. You're not under any rush to to get the wash in to make it look quite um, nice and even. So when I was doing the ground before, you notice I was really quite frantically trying to get it in because I just didn't want any other areas to dry um, before others. But with these shadows, they're just a lot more forgiving. You can certainly take your time and add in bits and pieces in here. Anthony Ashworth, do you know where the photo is in Italy? I from from um, someone commented and said that it's uh, Dubrovnik, Dubrovnik in Croatia, and all the pictures I've seen of Dubrovnik are, are kind of like based in, on, on a water boat kind of scene. Never seen something like this before, but I, I really love this reference photo because of the shadows and the light and the figures in here. So you can probably Google uh, Dubrovnik. Um, just go into like one of those free reference photo websites, and you can find stuff. A few references on it as well. Um, right, so I'm just going to start popping in some of these windows, okay, and uh, darken off more of these up here. Bit of popping a bit of pink in here as well. Um, you know, I. Like what I was saying, you, you kind of, you know, sometimes I get lazy and I just use neutral tint for all the shadows. Um, <clears throat> but actually what works better is if you use a combination of darks and um, so that you notice I've just mixed in a bit of red, a bit of blue in some areas and um, it makes those darker areas look different because in the real world, uh, well, it's composed, you know, mostly of tertiary colors, tertiary, secondary colors, um, you know, the shadows especially. So this is a way to get that nat natural mix without you putting in too much work, you know, trying to mix everything up, you know, to exact proportions and stuff. Just let the, just let, let the paper do, the watercolors do the work for you. 
there are some shadows here on the ground being cast by these um, shades as well, which I'm trying to get in. I got here. This is a bit of darkness again here and um, here as well. There's some darkness here. So I'm just going to darken in here. For that Just one go, all in one go. Uh, bring that down to the page. Cut around this figure. I'm going to leave his little hat on. Um, that yellow color that it looks like it's kind of in the sun there on the ground um, there's actually a kind of a shadow that joins on here on the ground comes out here between legs yeah. back in there there we go and notice how everything just joins together um, and then we're going to do the shadow here. <clears throat> okay, definitely Dubrovnik. I love that scene. Irene, you have to learn. Wow. Really jealous. I'd love to go. Love to go there one day once things settle down, you know. Claudia Xanthan, blown away by the skin tones. Uh, dried, much more true than the pink you applied. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things with, with watercolors. Um, you, you, Everything that you put on there, it ends up drying a little bit, a little bit lighter. So it, it doesn't dry, you know, a lot lighter, but um, definitely with with, with the thin washes. Um, yeah. So that's one of the things that's um, I when I first picked up watercolors, I thought it'd be so easy. I mean, if you just got, it's the most convenient sort of thing, and um. There's all these variables that you got to take into account. Okay, Anthony, I've got to go. Sorry, I'm done. Can we share our pictures? Yeah. So, um, just check in the uh, geez, check ch check in the description of the video later. I'll pop on the the Facebook group. So we've got a Facebook group, Watercolor Beginners. You can search it in Facebook as well. Um, you can also go to the Watercolor Mentor Facebook page. Um. And 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 over there, there's a link to the to the group or the page, and uh, you can post post on both. I would would really like to see what you come up with, so I can. Um, if you want some tips as well, you just let me know, and I can um, give you some constructive constructive feedback. I do get back to everyone as long as I can find the post. So thank you so much for coming along, Anthony, and I um, hope to see you around next time. The last bits, just, you know, these windows, let's just quickly add in some color in here, just some darkness, okay. Um, great. And some of these bricks as well, what you can do is just like add in a tiny bit of color on top of the bricks. Just a light wash here of burnt sienna. That. That. There. Connected up with some of the shadows there, there. Um, you can always go back into it later and add some more detail with the pen too. Really, uh, from this point on, it's just, um, yeah, it's really just darkening little areas. So, you know, for example, these windows and doors are actually a fair bit darker than and that's so kind of like this that pop on a bit of darkness with the brush skip over areas too you can sort of this try to try to do them in one brush stroke generally speaking otherwise they um the windows tend to look a bit overworked so i just want to draw in a little window shape i don't want to I don't want the, the windows to be the focus of this whole, whole little drawing illustration. A bit like that. There. Okay. Got, you know, little bits of darkness under here. Well, little things that you can just pick out, darken a little more, create. Contrast, just it's like you're editing a photo. 
joining on these shadows uh, as you can see to this like large shape it really makes quite a difference um there uh we'll do i'll just like dry brush a bit of so i've got a i've just picked up a bit of burnt sienna and dry the brush on the paper uh sorry on the um on the towel that I've got and I'm just going to drag that brush across in some areas of the building so that I can get a little bit of texture um just a little bit of texture for the buildings as well It'll look all really clean a bit of that um another thing I want to do as well is maybe pick up a little pink a little bit of pink and I want to get in some uh some little lines running through here. A little bit of only a bit more detail for these shades, but um, you know, really just make it um very light because you don't want to get rid of the um light that's on here in fact there's actually a bit of darkness on top of these uh, these awnings so runs across there there little bits and pieces Really just fixing up and altering some other areas. I mean, this is a bag. Here's a bag, some brown, put some brown in there. That there. I've forgotten this person's legs and things. We'll pop that in. Okay. <clears throat> okay, and uh the question from Lizzie, what kind of pen do you use for the outline of your drawings? So uh, nothing special really, Lizzie. I just use a bunch of these Uniball pens. And um, if you go to your local office supply store, you don't even need to go to an art supply store. You can pick these up for about $2. Um, just any pen that has its ballpoint pen and it's, it's got liquid ink. So I find that don't use a ballpoint pen with that sort of thicker ink in it. Use this, uh, the stuff here that's got the, um, the kind of liquid ink and make sure that it says waterproof on it. Um, and, and that's just going to make sure that when you go over it with the watercolor, it's not going to not going to run any everywhere. So I use a, a, a nib about a 0.5 nib as well for these ones. Um, I do have a 0.7 nib that I use to just to you know for example this figure here it's in the foreground. I might want to draw out a bit more, um, you know, outline it a bit more um, so that it, the figure comes forward a bit. So when you're using nibs that are larger, normally it's for um, objects and figures in the foreground and then you're you know with um, thinner nibs uh, you're using sort of stuff you're using it for the background and some of the figures walking around so um yeah i i think i think that's pretty much about it uh you know i'll go through later and change things up here and there uh, i just like to play around a bit more and um drop in extra you know extra details and and things like that um Know, after the demo is done to to basically just tidy things up a bit well, what i mean by that is like i might darken up some areas i might add in some hair on the figures and just have a play around until i feel happy with it um maybe add in some birds sort of flying around in the in the sky but this is basically the nuts and bolts of what we're we're doing we've got this large shadow that just runs through interconnects everything joins onto the shadows on the ground and then kind of merges and comes on to this building here so it's two-step process first step you're just putting on all the light colors second step you're just adding in all the dark colors and letting them merge with each other um and simplifying it down and in terms of the drawing you know we've gone through the simplification of the drawing we're looking at the buildings as one big shape okay draw the big shapes first and then add the smaller shapes on and then we've got the um these figures which all uh, are drawn in front of the buildings so um that's essentially it. I, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this this little workshop. Um, Leah, how long would you? Leah, how long um, would?
would you spend on the scene if on location? So on, on location, um, very little time, really. Uh, I can draw something in about 15, maybe 15, 20 minutes if I'm, if I'm quick, like in an entire scene. And I also find like when, there's, uh, when I'm on my own as well, I can concentrate uh, a lot better. And, and because there's people walking around and moving about and uh, things are changing, you know, the light's changing, the shadows are changing. There's this sense of urgency where I've got to, you know, step up. Step the step up the pace. So, um, yeah, you you'll find that doing it on site really challenges you, and um, builds your observation skills in terms of pers um, perspective. Uh, it, it really forces you also to use your imagination because you might be halfway through drawing a person and then you realize, oh, they're gone. So you you kind of gotta you really think hard to what they look like or change up whatever you've got. So it, it's, it's fun and it's frustrating, um, but it's really a great way to learn. And uh, I used to do it a lot when we were, when obviously uh, things, times were different. Um, and if you can't go out, it's, you know, don't, don't fret. There's always reference pictures you can use. There's, um, you know, Google maps and things that you can just pop on and, a Google Street View, I think it's called, that you can just pop on and and, and sort of look around at different areas in the world and, and sketch from that as well. Georgia, uh, sorry, Gregoria Rinaldi. I tried to sketch along and messed up the proportions of the figures. Yeah, look, it's just a learning process, uh, Gregorio. So, um, I look, I've I stuff things up all the time as well and um the more you draw these figures uh you know a good good tip is just if you've got uh just a blank sheet of paper just just practice just sketching figures um in different poses based on references and stuff and you just become more confident at it uh through time shirley atkinson thanks for the class i've been steered away from people before this was interesting Fantastic, Shirley, and, and I hope this has helped you understand that it, it doesn't really, you don't really need to have a, a strong foundation in understanding how to sketch the proportions of people. Like, it, if you look how quickly I've done these, it's just that you only need a little bit of detail in there and the general um, height of the figure, you know, like I was saying with the head, um, heads fitting into the bodies and things like that, um, that will help you to, to sort of, understand so you've got a lot of comments in here right um marjorie baker this was great thank you for doing this i'm inspired fantastic marjorie and i hope you get out there and uh, if you if you're able to and, and just you know try to integrate some of this urban sketching into your into your life um it's a great way to uh learn on location and um, find time to actually paint. It makes it fun. You might be in the middle of um, having a walk and just having a rest. And um, that, that's that's the, the beauty of, of all this on location work. And, you know, originally you'd see, you know, the, a lot of the classical artists that go out with their gigantic um, easel, especially those oil painters, gigantic easel and setting that up and it's all messy and, you know, people are watching and stuff like that. But if you just got a little sketchbook and a pen, um, it's so easy. Just pull that out of your backpack and, and get some of this done. I've learned so much by doing little sketches of, of, uh, of these scenes. Um, I've, I've all these little sketches that I've popped into my sketchbook. It's probably, um, probably what I've, you know, how I've learned a lot of the watercolor techniques and gotten comfortable using them because often what happens is people, um, they don't practice the watercolor techniques enough and they don't know the concentration of colors to use and um, to create lights and darks and to create flat washes and things. And they save it all up until they're, until they're ready to do a big painting. And then, but then they don't have the, um, the 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 practice they don't have the brush mileage there and a lot of my sketchbooks are, i've got some in the cupboard just filled with rubbish all the pages are just filled with me um you know getting different concentrations of color it just looks like a mess but i've learned a lot from that and uh, i'd really suggest um doing that sort of thing fantastic uh, thank you margaret uh, satnia and uh, Christine Williams, 
appreciate it. I'm glad that you guys um, got something out of this uh, workshop and um, that you understood what I was talking about as well, which is always a good, always a good thing. Sometimes uh, it's, it's really good to get feedback for you. I, I don't, you know, whether it's constructive feedback, you know, stuff that I could improve on or, you know, wh whether it's just, you know, yep, it's, it's all good. I always love to hear back. Um, cause when I'm painting, I'm kind of multitasking and at times I'm not sure whether I'm, I'm getting through hundred percent or not. So it's really good to have that feedback from you guys so that I can, um, uh, make it worth your time. And I really appreciate you all being here. I know there's probably a million things you could be doing around this, um, around this time. And I've, again, I've gone over by, I said, I wouldn't go, I said, I wouldn't go over an hour, hour and a half, but, um, it's now two hours, so <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it, it really um I don't know how I can talk for that long. I'm usually I'm a pretty quiet person actually. Uh, I don't know if I'm quiet, but I'm probably a bit more of an introverted person. Uh, so it's good. <clears throat> Claudia said thanks for offering this class. Really inspired me so much. Thank you, Danka, Jeremy. Um, <clears throat> Yves got to go. We'll post my later. Thanks, Darren. Thank you, Yves. Uh, Miat, too. Thank you, Sheila. Fiona and Lindsay, thank you. And, um, and, uh, really appreciate you giving up this Saturday morning on a glorious day in Melbourne. That's okay. Um, I love running, I love running these things and, um, keeps me busy at home as well. <clears throat> Barbara, thank you. I learned a lot. Uh, Wendy, thanks for a great learning experience. I'm not as fast as you and wasn't prepared for the hairdryer. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Um, it's a little trick. It's a little trick that I use. And uh, I, I'm, I just, you know, I don't think any of us like sitting around watching paint dry. So it's just one of those little hacks that I that I use. Some watercolorists, they, they, they don't like using hair dryers. I find if you just put it on a low setting and just sort of pass it over the top, you, you don't disturb the wash these things up. So it's a little thing there. Um, Going to the video finish off and ruin the shadows a little um i get so caught up in the detail and need to to loosen up yeah and i'm, I'm exactly the same wendy uh I, I could you know i could make this thing four hours if i wanted to but um i know some of you need to get to sleep and i need to have my lunch thank you for the wonderful demo and great tips thank you angela yolanda wong thank you really enjoyed how to draw from a complicated reference photo fantastic um Thank you, Patricia. Wonderful, lots of information. And uh, let's have a look. <clears throat> oh, there's quite a few comments on YouTube as well from Mary Mary um, McClellan. Thank you so much. Lots of wonderful information. Uh, glad you got got something out of it. You and Yvette. Thank you, Yvette, um, for coming along and for your feedback. Danita Reynolds, love this. Really enjoyed this and learned a lot. Thank you so much for sharing your process. Thank you, Danita. Dr. Ratna Chaudhry, so beautiful. Appreciate it. And uh, Ava Leonardo, thank you for the wonderful tutorial. And thanks for watching. Um, I'd love to see your versions of this line of wash painting. So, um, you know, pop onto to Facebook or I do have a website as well. You can check in the description, watercolormentor.com, or you can just go to the, the Facebook page, Watercolor Mentor. We also have a Facebook group, Watercolor Beginners. There's about 70 nearly seventy thousand members in there at the moment so you can jump in there um request to join and and please um post your versions i really would like to see and if you want some constructive feedback just let me know i'm always um you know i said last time i was a bit worried wary to give constructive feedback at times because people paint for different reasons i don't want to don't want to say you should do this should do that or you know give any tips and um additional uh information if if you if, if you don't want that so just let me know um, if you like the video as well, um, please share it. Please share it with with some of your friends, or just share it in watercolor groups. Um, you know, I've only just started recording and doing these lives about a year ago. Well, not a year ago, about six months ago. So very new to this, and um, you know, I really appreciate having an audience and being able to share this um, with people as well just some of the tips and, and helping you guys out so um would appreciate if yeah if you get some time and you liked it just um just share it um i've also got pay a patreon that i set up a little while back as, as well that you can check in the description um i've got a whole bunch of courses i think i've got about 32 courses 
um, out there. As you can see, I've been, um, you know, I've had a lot of time during lockdown. So <laughs> this is what I've been doing pretty much for the last year, just recording and painting and uh, messing around with computers, learning how to edit videos and um, also uh, learning uh, just how to teach more effectively online because it can be difficult with the, with the feedback. But I really appreciate all the comments, all the feedback that I get um, in the live chat, especially, it, it, you know, it, for, for me, it really means a lot um, and, and sort of keeps me going, keeps me motivated, um, just seeing people improve and, and having all those like, lovely comments as well. Um, so, yeah, I think that's about all. I, I kind of wanted to, uh, I kind of wanted to say. Um, I, I know these days it's a little bit tough because, you know, with, with all, all this situation going on in the world and often, you know, we, we rely on our feelings to, to sort of inspire us to paint. Um, but just remember, it doesn't happen all the time. You don't always feel inspired to paint. You don't always feel like you want to paint, uh, especially these days. But, um, you know, setting a time and being consistent with your painting. So you might set a, a time, you know, three times a week or something like that. Monday, Wednesday, Friday after, after five, you know, you do a little painting. I think that really helps to keep you consistent. And, um, you, you know, halfway through the painting, you, you know, confident you'll get into it and you'll start um, getting to the mood. So sometimes if, if, if you don't, if the mood doesn't come to you, you just got to, uh, you, you got to bring it to you yourself. So uh, that's probably my, my finishing finishing words. And uh, thank you. Thank you again, everyone for, for joining. And thanks, Carol, Amy. Hope to see you all next time.